Hey guys, it's Destroyer here. Update 1.4 has just been released, so I've already updated and I'm loading the game for the first time. So this update brings us Command Center Level 9 and also the Admiral's Ship, which is available at all Command Center levels. My storage is currently full, so we'll come back to that shortly. I've been very busy over the last few weeks preparing for this update. I've maxed nearly everything with the exception of some collectors and one infantry bunker, which is currently upgrading right now. I even fully upgraded all of my ambush and the landmines too, and also my walls. So the command center level 9 upgrade is going to cost 7.5 million red mercury. Here's a list of the new items available. So I'm going to upgrade this now, however all of my engineers are busy. So I need to instantly finish the infantry bunker to free up a worker. I've got all their passwords. Standing by. The upgrade actually takes one week and two days, but I'm going to instantly finish this now, which costs 1,429 power cells. As you can see, we now store 35 donated troops, and the command center now stores 20,000 of each resource. Let's head back to the Admiral's ship. I can now collect my first day's logging bonus, which is 500 red mercury. Day 2 seems to be in another 50 minutes time. Here you can see the next 4 days rewards, however it does go up to 14 days. If you log in each day, you'll get the next reward, however if you miss a day, you'll go back to day 1. There are 9 levels to upgrade. The higher levels will provide you with larger rewards. I'll come back to this later since I have many upgrades to do first. So let's check out the shop and see what's new at Command Center Level 9. In the buildings, we have one additional red mercury and supply storage. In the defenses menu, we have an additional heavy artillery and rocket battery. However, I'm not sure if that's exclusively available for Command Center Level 9. There's also 10 more walls, one ambush and four landmines. So I'll go ahead and build these first. There's one ambush. Unfortunately, you do have to keep going into the menu to build the landmines. Then we have the 10 additional walls. Thankfully, these are easier to build. So I'll build my third heavy artillery now. That takes 3 hours to build and 41 power cells to instantly finish. Now it's time for the rocket battery, which takes 4 hours and 52 power cells. There's no additional upgrade for the infantry bunker or the vehicle bunker. That infantry bunker was my last remaining upgrade for the command center level 8. I've got all their passwords. The aircraft factory upgrades to level 3, which will let us produce the new hunter drone. As for the research facility level 6, there's no additional research added in this update. So you do need to upgrade to level 7 to research more. That will cost 4 million and take 6 days, so I'll do that later. There's no additional upgrade for the war factory or the barracks. The airfield does upgrade to level 7, which will provide the hunter drones for defense. There's no additional level for the collectors. 
There's one additional upgrade for the rocket battery, heavy artillery and the sentry tower. I will do these shortly but my main priority is the aircraft factory. So the aircraft factory is going to cost 6.5 million red mercury. If I buy the resources I might not have enough power cells left to speed up all of my builds. So I'm going to farm for the resources. I'll be right back in a second. I'm back guys with almost full storage. I did a lot of farming as you can see in my battle messages. I attacked plenty of juicy bases with my grunts and hackers. So it didn't take me all that long to fill my storage. Now that I have enough red mercury I can go ahead and upgrade the aircraft factory. That costs 6.5 million red mercury. It does take 7 days to upgrade but I'll instantly finish it for a thousand power cells. Now it looks the same as what you've seen in some of the later campaign missions. I can now produce hunter drones and here are the specs. They have 900 hit points and do 95 damage per second. The speed is quite fast but they do cost 35,000 each and takes 30 minutes to build. They do take 11 camp space however each build does come in a swarm of 8 drones so it's quite reasonable. They have a 7 attack range which makes them easy targets for rocket batteries. However since there's 8 of them they will be good at distracting the rocket batteries while other troops take them down. Their favourite targets are infantry and vehicles so they are easily distracted by enemy bunker troops and ambush. They do 3 times the damage versus infantry and 2 times the damage versus vehicles. Now for the research facility upgrade, that's another 4 million red mercury. However I don't have enough for that right now so I'll do some more farming. First I need to get rid of these supplies. I do have 3 defences to upgrade and it seems that the rocket battery will be the most suitable. So that's a 7 day build and a thousand power cells to instantly finish. It's looking pretty juicy now. The body on that is a bit longer. The health is now 35,000 and the damage is 720. The previous level was 32,000 health and 680 damage. Now I'm off to do some farming so I'll be right back. I'm back again with some more resources. The red mercury is easy to get but the supplies is a bit scarce right now. Here's my battle log. All of these attacks have pushed my medals up by a few hundred. Now it's time to work on the level 7 research facility upgrade. 4 million red mercury which takes 6 days or 877 power cells to instantly finish. Now let's take a look inside. We can now research hackers to level 5 and that looks like a really decent upgrade. Snipers go to level 4, hijackers go to level 3, the artillery tanks go to level 4, rocket buggies to level 4, jackals to level 5, and the hunter drones go to level 2. It looks like a decent increment however the build cost does go up quite significantly. Now let's head back to the cargo dock. I've collected my second day reward. Let's do some upgrading since I have plenty of red mercury. It's now level 3. Going to level 4. Level 5 is 400,000 red mercury. Level 6 costs a million. Level 7 costs 2 million, however, I need that for my wall upgrades. I don't see the rewards changing yet, however, higher levels are supposed to provide larger rewards. With my remaining 2 million red mercury, I'm going to upgrade my walls to level 9. They go up by 10% health to 22,000. Level 9 looks like steel with a fluorescent green bar around the sides. I'll upgrade a second wall and you can see what they look like together.
and now when they are placed diagonally. The ambush does go up one more level which provides a larger squad size but I'm not going to farm for that just yet. The landmines go to level 9 and that increases the damage by 50% which is quite significant however you would expect that for twice the upgrade cost of the previous level. There's no new army camps so you still have 120 space. Now I think it's time to do a hunter drone attack. I'm bringing 10 grunts to help push the line back and to also trigger off the landmines. I'm not sure if hijackers can take control of your drones. I'm using 10 swarm of hunter drones which is a total of 80 drones. Before I go into battle I'll spend my supplies by upgrading the other two defences. Unfortunately my original recording played up so I can't show you the footage. The sentry tower upgrade costs 4 million supplies and takes one week. I did finish it instantly for a thousand power cells. The heavy artillery upgrade costs 7.2 million supplies and takes four days. I finished that instantly for 630 power cells. Now it's time to take a look at that drone attack. My recording did play up and lag a bit so I can't show you the live attack. However I'll bring up my replay and we can watch it from there. This is quite a decent base. It's a command center level 8 with three active rocket batteries. I'm pushing my grunts down the sideline to trigger off any ambush. Then I'm going to drop all 10 swarms of um, drones here, which is 80 drones in total. They attack the nearest uh, tower first, however they do prefer to attack enemy troops. So half of the swarm are getting distracted on the tanks which are heading towards my base. The tanks can't retaliate, however there are rocket buggies in the area and they're taking down the drones fairly quickly. I'm only using two troop types here so they do recover fairly fast. I'm pushing the line back again. I'm going to drop all of my drones again and they will attack those nearest rocket batteries. They're the biggest threat to drones. However the enemy bunkers have spawned some more troops which uh, distracts my drones and it pulls them right across the base there. It's very dangerous territory. So there's a lot of rocket troopers on the ground and copters taking down the drones. So they don't last all that long. So I'm waiting for them to recover before I start another push. Attacking from the left hand side again. And they are attacking the collectors on the side there. More enemy bunkers have spawned troops there. So the drones are getting distracted once again. They've been pulled right across that third rocket battery, which has almost been taken down. It's gone now. So now they're attacking the copters, but the copters are no match for 80 drones. However, there's a lot of rocket troopers on the ground too. So I've taken down all three rocket batteries now. Spawned some more drones and they're attacking those bunkers. However, they seem to have spotted some enemy troops nearby, which are heading down to my base. So for some reason they're getting distracted on them from quite a distance. So they do chase them down. Once they die off, the drones will return. As you can see, they do a good job on those hackers. So back they go once again. There's only a few bunkers left and a couple of defences. The bunkers have spawned, but they're no match for my drones. Now the drones are going to take down those last, two, last three bunkers. Then it's just a matter of cleaning up the remaining buildings there, so that's quite easy. As you can see, they're a very effective troop, however they do have some downsides. They do get distracted on enemy troops and could be pulled right across the base into enemy defences territory. So I highly recommend putting some uh, rocket batteries behind your bunkers to protect them. So in a way they're good at attacking bunkers, 
because they get distracted by the troops and on the same hand they could get pulled across dangerous territory. So that's all of the upgrades I'll be doing, so let's have a recap of what's new in this update. There's one additional upgrade for the rocket battery, heavy artillery and sentry tower. There's a new level for the landmines and ambush. There was an additional one rocket battery and heavy artillery. Four landmines, one ambush, ten walls, as well as an additional wall level. More importantly, there was a new level of aircraft factory which enables the Hunter drone. A new level of research facility with a lot of troops to research, which includes the level 2 Hunter drone. There's a level 7 airfield which will defend your base with the Hunter Drones. There's the Cargo Dock which gives you daily login rewards. Once again there's 9 upgrade levels, one available per level of Command Center. Of course we have the Command Center level 9 upgrade which gives us an extra 5 donation troops. There was an additional red mercury and supply storage which I haven't built just yet. As far as I know nothing requires the additional storage just yet. I hope this video has provided you with a good insight to the latest update. I'll try and upload some hunter drone attacks later on so keep in touch.